Hey, welcome back everyone. It's Keith once again. And what we're doing here today is not a review. It's not necessarily a guide. It's not a how-to. But what I'm doing is I'm taking the newly updated Ryzen Master System or software rather, I don't it's not really a system, but we're taking Ryzen Master and we're going to use it and we're going to tweak the Ryzen 9 3900X. Now, of course, uh, this is on my Crosshair 6 Hero motherboard, so an X370 board with the 7201 with the uh, Agisa 1.0.0.2 released on July 12th, 2019. So you can see all that here. Our memory is, of course, the Flare X DDR4 3200CL14 kit. Uh, I was using this because the I'm finishing up that Knox memory that I had in the video linked up in the corner. Uh, it's in another system right now being finished up on that review so that should be coming very soon if you'd like to see a video review on that let me know down in the comment section below but back to the CPU so this is the Ryzen 9 3900X and we're gonna push that right up there in the corner and we're gonna get back to Ryzen Master because we're gonna use Ryzen Master to monitor the temperatures we're gonna run Cinebench R15 because it's quick and easy just to see the tweaks and the results and we're gonna open up a an Excel file and there's nothing in here right now we're gonna do I tell you what here's what we're gonna do uh, let's see here multi and single okay so we're gonna do single core and multi core we're gonna do stock and then we're gonna do we're gonna start tweaking it and we'll put our results in here so that we can see them in here now I'm recording this using the Elgato HD 60s over on my laptop so we'll see how this turns out but we're gonna minimize this and the reason I'm doing the recording over there is in case this dies um, well it's easy it, it doesn't I don't lose everything it stays over there and I'll just stop it and in between the single core we're gonna I'm gonna pause the video and we're gonna well we're gonna jump to the result rather than sitting there watching it I'm gonna move this down here that way we can still see the temperatures and the peak speed so there we go that way we can still see that and we can see the uh, core VID, see what it's asking for over there. It's pretty high right now, but we're sitting at 4.31. Uh, oh, look at that. Look, you see it? 4.6. We hit it. Oh, there it is. Did it again. <laughs> so we hit that. Uh, let's see multi core real quick. We're going to run it. And uh, oh, yeah, I got to add in a graph for the thermals because you can see there it gets quite toasty. Now it's using the NHD 15S, and it's in the stock configuration of the. Uh, NZXT H510 Elite. So what did we hit? 80, uh, you know what? We got 3144. We'll go ahead and jot that down. So I'm going to do temp. We're going to add another one. Peak temp. Uh, Multi-core. 3144. And then we'll do single in a second. But I'm going to rerun this one because I want to get that temperature because I totally missed it by jabbering. So we see 81. 81.24. We're not going to... We're either going to round up or round down. We're not going to get... Too dirt. Ooh, that was right at 83. So uh, we saw basically 83. So 83 was our peak temp. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and let it run the single core and we're going to see where that comes in. All right. So 197. So we've got stock results hitting 1.3 volts across all cores and resulting in, we'll go ahead and insert. Well, no, I'm going to remove that because I know that's stock. So stock is, uh, let's see here, 4.05 gigahertz. I'm going to make this a really wide margin here. So single core of 197. So the idea here is this is kind of where we're starting from. And what we're going to do is make adjustments and see how these numbers all respond to the changes. So we're going to minimize this and bring up Ryzen Master. We're going to go down to the custom profile. And we're going to take a look real quick at... Uh, manual because you can do default or precision boost overdrive or auto overclocking but for me I have this thing with AMD parts that I like to t tune them down so the tune it down to the lowest temperatures lowest power draw lowest all of that jazz and that's kind of where we start so you could start well let's start by looking at this so you got the core selection so your active CCDs you can disable one have both of them enabled um, I've disabled one and found that you get a pretty high uh, boost but I still kept hitting the same temperature so I was like something's going on other than my cooler because NHD 15s is quite capable so what I've done here is we're gonna start at 4.05 so this is the all core turbo so all core set to this clock speed and I tune the voltage down to 1.2 
Now, because I don't have LLC enabled, and for some reason, even when I enable LLC in the BIOS, it's just not sticking. That was something I said in the vid previous video with the 3900X and the Crosshair 6, is that the only thing sticking in the BIOS is memory clock. So everything else is kind of up in the air, so I was reduced to using Ryzen Master, and I've actually found that I really like it. So the idea here is you can have this enabled, so when it's like this, they're decoupled. You can change each one individually or you can sit there and change all of them to the same thing and take forever or you can do this and change one and they all change why would you want to change one at a time well it's very simple uh, AMD has in one of their latest updates included what we got here we got it showing up the fastest core of CCD 0 uh, core 2 so that and then you go to the little gray star and it's the fastest core of CCX 1 of CCD 0 so you've got your fastest core from each CCX on the die it's across both of them and that way you know which ones are the most powerful now what you can do here is you can tune all of your weaker cores so this one here it's the second fastest you can leave it alone and you can boost just these two that way if you go up to a four core a load across four cores you can get an even better single core and we're gonna kinda play with that here in just a few minutes and kinda show you where I ended up with uh, my results. So right now we're going to implement a, we're going to lock it. We're going to do 1.2 volts at 4.05. We're going to go ahead and apply that and it's that easy. Now you can go down here into the memory stuff. We're not touching that because that's not quite something that I really get into. All right. So now with that applied, that's it. That's all it takes. Just hit apply. You can do apply and test and let it test it and do all that, discard it. I've already gone through and I know that this is fine. So uh, it changed here 1.2 at 4.01. Let's pull that back up. Let's um, go back to home so we can monitor temperatures. Drop it down here. Hit CPU. And let's see where we end up. This is so much faster than it used to be. This used to be such a tedious process. And if you, you, you don't believe me, go ahead. Run it with four cores active. Four cores, four threads. And uh, tune it down and wait, wait for that. So 3107. I'm going to have to run it again. I missed the temperature. I've got to remember to watch that. So let's see here. Uh, 4.05 uh, gigahertz, 1.2 volts. We got uh, 3107. So it was boosting a little bit better uh, that go around. So let's go ahead and run this, see where these temperatures get. I know you guys in the comments are like, oh, he's having to run this so many times. But we're having a little fun together. We're experimenting. Um, you can see there the temperatures are much, much better. So we're hitting 67, so 67, uh, 67. Uh, that's a bit of a, a reduction. I'm gonna go ahead and hit run on a uh, single core and we'll get back to the result. All right, so here we are back at the CPU single core results. So when leaving all of the cores at the particular clock rate, we dropped to 188. So that's a reduction of 5% on the single core. So, I mean, that's not really what you want, but you know, it is what it is. All right, so it is time for my daily overclock. So this is 4.15 gigahertz at 1.2 volts. Now I'm gonna leave it right here. And I gotta remember to go in here this time and actually change it. We're gonna minimize, minimize that. And we're going to go here and change this to 4.15 or 4.150. Oh, not, yeah, not that other one. So go ahead and apply that. We're going to hit that, drop it down here. Boom. See, it changed up here. It's really 4141, but, you know, you can thank the 99.8 uh, uh, bus speed there. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, let's go ahead and hit run on the single core let's or multi-core, and we're looking at the temperatures. I'm looking at the temperatures. This time I won't forget it. So we should see about the same thermals. We're looking at about 66, yeah, 66, 67. So 67, so 3189. So let's see here, uh, 3189. So we're up over stock, and we're at 67C still. So there we go. Let's jump in and see the multi-core. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this, run multi-core, and I'll come back with that result. All right, so here we are back with the results there at the, was it 4.15? Yeah, that's so this is my daily. This is what I run. So we're back up to 192 on the single core. So we've, we've increased our multi-core score by just a little bit. Um, we've gone down five points on our single core, which is 2.5%, really. Uh, not that big of a 
drop there, probably imperceptible. I haven't perceived the difference, at least in this all core. Um, I'm going to push it to 4.3. So here's the thing. I can do 4.3 gigahertz at 1.3. This this is an X370 setup. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. So in case I crash, just in case I don't really like to run it there. But um, ooh, that was not quite what I meant to do. But we're right here at full core. So, so we're going to just jump. We're going to do 4300. So 1.3. I think I actually did 1.35. So we'll go to 1.35. Hit 1.35. Um, change that in here. That way I'm notating it right. And whenever we look at it later, we're getting the right numbers. So 4.135. And there it is. 1.350 at 4391 megahertz. Again, 44 on the multiplier. 43. Ooh, I'm glad I looked at that. That was, um, <laughs> was not what I wanted to do. So 4300. Okay. There we go. We would have crashed super hard. But you guys saw it. It was at 4,400. So let's go ahead and run that. Uh, let me get this back where it needs to go. That way we can see the thermals here. And I'm going to pay attention to that much better than I have in the past. So 64, 76, 78, 79, and not 80. We're going to hit 80. All right, we hit 80. We're going to hit 81, 81, 82. So 82, uh, 82. Let's go ahead and do that. We're still under what we got at stock. Uh, so our multi-core is 3302. So that's up quite a bit. Let's see what it does for the single core. And you seen that it was stable. So single core, and I'll catch you in those results. Hey, look at that. Uh, single core of 200. So look at that. So we have officially and completely surpassed the single core, multi-core, and thermal performance of stock while using a... 4.3 gigahertz all core overclock with 1.35 volts. Now 1.35 volts, of course, if you were watching while it was running, it was dropping down to 1.278 or somewhere around there because of load line calibration is non-existent. So VDroop kicks in and it actually is running much lower. These are the set values, not necessarily the runtime values. All right, so what we want to do here is, um, well, you notice I've reset everything because what I want to do at this point, so we've seen from stock to 4.05 going down very low, 4.15 able to get it up, performance is good, uh, temperatures are great, and what about happens when you go to a very weird number? So let's say you want to do 4.15 gigahertz multi, um, or say, say all core, We'll just do AC or and, and then 4.25 uh, gigahertz dual core or we'll do DC. You, hopefully you can keep up with that AC and DC. The idea here is in Ryzen Master, you can remember how we talked about decoupling these cores. So let's take this back down to 4150 uh, across all cores. So we're going to drop our voltage down. We're going to do one point. Uh, two five volts here just uh, just to give it a little extra breathing room we're gonna go ahead and decouple these and we're gonna go to our gold star cores and we're gonna go 4250 uh, so 4250 now one of the things that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it up to where you can see the um, core interaction so once we go back here it's all applied and we go back to our home we can see uh, which ones are asleep what clock speeds they're hitting and I want to take a look at what happens with these while they're running and we're taking thermal performance so I'm going to click here and then we're going to click back down here so click CPU to get the multi-core and our thermals so this is interesting there's a few cores that are so we're hitting 69 but you notice there's a few cores that are just staying 3.4 gigahertz so 69, so we hit 70C, but several of the cores stayed at 3.9 gigahertz or 3.4. That was really weird, but that resulted in our lowest score of 3022. Uh, so multi cores, 3022, but we raised our temperatures up from our 4.05 and 4.15, which yielded better results and lower thermals. Let's go ahead and save that. I want to see what happens with the single core, because remember we set two of the cores to hit. Uh, 4.25 and that's going to be the fastest cores. I want to see if anything is getting pinned to those cores and see how that runs. So I'm going to talk a little bit through this one. We're not going to skip entirely to the end, um, but it doesn't, it looks like it's wanting to run on that, that core, but it's really not. 
So it didn't really do us a whole lot of good to overclock that one. I probably should have applied the better voltages to one of these cores because these seem to be the ones that are fairly active. It's staying pretty consistent on CCD0, which is good overall, but I expected to see it kind of stay pinned a little bit better. And before anybody, if anybody's gotten to this point and they're wondering, yeah, I am using the latest chipset drivers and all of that jazz. So it's very interesting. So I'm going to back off and we'll see the result and we'll kind of see where things land up. Well, this is unfortunate. Um, yeah, that's just kind of where this one fell in. Uh, so yeah, so single core 171 there on that one. So you can see these results right here and these are not anything crazy this isn't a crazy setup that i've got this is just me going through ryzen master through software live for the most part i cut out the uh one crash that i introduced by doing something i hit too many keys at once that was a completely dumb moment but outside of that there was no stability issues and i had did it i did rerun these last set of numbers just to verify that these were right because it seemed really weird that they would be so low. I honestly expected it to be somewhere between uh, these numbers and these numbers. I, I was honestly hoping for probably this this on the multi, so right around 3200, and then maybe maybe 195 on the single. And I'm sure somebody out there would be like, Keith, why did it, why did it have a higher uh, single core score with 4.3 than it did with the stock when it's supposed to turbo up to 4.6? Well, if you've been keeping up with Ryzen uh, 3000, that 4.6 on the 3900X is a very rare one, even though we hit it early on in the video. It's very momentarily. So, I mean, it boosts to that. It just doesn't sustain that. Uh, but that 4.3 was a completely sustained across all cores the entire time, so it never had a chance to drop uh, frequency. So that could be be part of the reason that it did that. So that's, that's the results. I mean, let me know down in the comment section what you're seeing or did this help you any seeing it being done in real time rather than just seeing graphs and talking about it uh, if you made it through this video i really do appreciate it and if you appreciated the way i did this let me know down in the comment section below in fact let me know what i could do to make this type of video better or and more informative because i'd like to do more of these style videos along with the typical review stuff because I find these are, are usually pretty helpful for people who are wanting to play around with these kind of things. So this has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so that we don't miss you and the next one.